Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 142, part 2. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook Excel Magic Tricks 133 to 145. Hey, this is part 2 for trick 142, and wow, do we have some amazing array formulas for counting dates. Here's a setup. We did a bunch of conditional formatting that uh, shows us when the employees uh, took off for vacation and the green means it's a weekend. But here we have some names and we have two dates. Now we're going to go to the end of the table and uh, deal with counting things like the number of days of vacation they had and number of weekends. First I think I'm going to actually highlight all of these columns except for the first one and the uh, second to last one and I'm going to right click hide so I can see everything. I can still make formulas like if I need to go from E to A114 I can still do that. Now counting days is pretty straightforward. I'm going to highlight the whole range and then the light colored cell at the top. The key to counting dates is you always say equals and click on the later date minus the earlier date. Remember these are serial numbers, number of days since December 31st 1899. So if I subtract these two um, in earlier videos, I've shown you how to do loans and accounts receivable, but and this formula works. But here it won't work because they actually, in this payroll, took off this day and it ended this day. That means one for this payroll because they took one vacation day. So we actually have to amend this formula and do plus one. Now, if I want to populate all of these, I'm going to control enter. Notice I control entered, which just populate them. That's the same as um, putting a formula and click and dragging it down. That's not an array. Now, counting weekends, that's going to be pretty complicated. And here's the problem. We only have um, this day right here and this day. We don't have the whole series of dates written out for us. So somehow, we have to construct in memory uh, 1023, 1024, 1025, all the way to 1031. And the way we'll do that is, is a trick I learned from Mr. Excel in one of his podcasts. We'll use the uh, row function and the indirect function to create an array of dates in memory. Now, we're going to click in just one cell because we're going to create an array formula and copy it down. In fact, I'm going to start in this cell right here because it'll be easier to understand it when we have a series of dates. This one is 31 to 31, so series of dates. So right here equals sum if and the if is basically going to say remember there's a logical test and then what value to put in the cell if it's true and value to put if in false the logical test for us is is there are there any weekends here so that's our logical test. Now it just so happens that the actual logical test is going to be pretty complicated, but the idea is simple. Are there any weekends here? If that's true, we want to put 1, otherwise 0. The array formula will store up all the ones that it stores for true to is this a weekend, and then the sum will add them up, and that's how we can count weekends, given the fact that we only have two dates here. All right, you ready? Here's equals week day. And we need, for here, it's a serial number. We actually need the, the array of dates in memory. So we're going to have to start with row and then indirect. And we're going to have to construct. Here's the, this row and indirect together is the uh, trick for constructing dates. I'm going to start with the earlier date ampersand, the double quote, colon, double quote, ampersand, and then click on the later date. Close parentheses. That indirect is creating uh, text. It says, and remember, un, this is not a date. It's a serial number. So this is some lower serial number. This is some higher serial number. So it's really uh, getting a, a, from that number to this number. Well, when the row function looks at it, it'll actually convert it to exactly the a serial number dates we want. I'm going to close parentheses. And just to see how this works, we can do our F9 trick. 
Remember, our goal is to, to create in memory a bunch of serial dates. So I'm going to highlight that and hit the F9 key. Sure enough, that's exactly what it did. There's the serial numbers. Now when the weekday function looks at this, it, can, it knows serial numbers, and it can tell us which one is, in fact, a weekend. Control-Z. In our part one, we saw how the weekday requires a second argument. Right here, you can see serial number and then return type. By the way, the reason why there's a bunch of serial numbers, this is an array. So we're allowed to have an array instead of a single value, comma, two. And that comma, two means for return type, it means that the days will be numbered. One is Monday, two is Tuesday, Saturday is six, Sunday is seven. You could look in help menu for other ways, but two means one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Monday is one, Sunday is seven. All right, so week, weekday, we got that, and that should equal six. Now we're going to close parentheses. Notice how that parentheses right there and there. This will deliver a bunch of true falses. And we need to add to those because we want to do or um, because we need Saturdays or Sundays. And we need to scoop this out, the same exact whole little part right here, but change the 6 to a 7. Control C, Control V, and I'm going to change the 6 to a 7. So there it is. There's our logical test. Comma, and that, that big, long, complicated logical test is just, is it a weekend? Okay, comma, value of true 1, comma, value of false 0. Close parentheses on the if, close parentheses on the sum, and then control and shift and enter. So it doesn't look like there's any there. Let's copy it up, and then we'll copy it down. And sure enough, this person does have two weekends. If you come over here, oh. The, when we had our conditional format, you could see that there's two weekends. Now, we need to do uh, an equally complicated array formula for counting do. And I'm actually going to have to expand by highlighting this and then right click unhide. Because the problem here is if we just had some do's um, only in the red area, we could that's days off, we could actually just count if and ask for do's. But we have a problem here. There's some do's in this um, days off which don't, aren't in this range. So we're going to have to do a similar trick. We're going to have to somehow, uh, with a formula, ask, please show us all the days from here to here, and then uh, count the do's. So here it is. We're going to come over here into the count do. Uh, so we're in cell AL15. Now, I, I hope I can fit this in. I'm going to, it's getting near the end of the video. I'm going to highlight all the columns except the first and last one because that'll help us. Right click hide. And then here it is. I'm going to click in this cell right here and we have to uh, go alt equals for auto sum and then open parentheses. And now I need to ask a question of this range. All of these right here. And I need to lock it going down because it needs to be locked uh, actually in all directions. I'm going to lock it going down because we're only copying it down. And that range is that greater than or equal to this, the start date. If you watch part one, you saw that's the same construct we did for uh, the conditional formatting. That, and this will del deliver a bunch of trues and falses. And that has to be multiplied by a bunch of other trues and falses. Between there, and I'm going to lock it going down, and that has to be less than or equal to this date. And actually, this date right here needs to be locked going to the side. So I'm going to F4, F4, F4. And so does this one, F4, F4, F4. Because when I'm copying it across the columns, it needs to be locked. But when I copy down, it does not need to be locked. So we have those trues and falses, trues and falses. And that's what, in essence, uh, gets us our range of days off. So the trues and false, when there's a true here and a true here, they'll multiply together and they'll get a true. Finally, we need to multiply it by this range right here. This is the one with all the do's. And that has to equal, in quotes, DO. And that right there will be trues for all of the do's, but the do's that will come out true corresponding to the dates that fall here that are true also to be a true times a true times a true and that will give us a one or true times true is one. I'm going to control shift enter and then double click and send it down. And sure enough if we were to look over here this last person if we unhide all these I'm running out of time here 
uh, we have a do there and a do there, and we don't want one of them, and so that got it right. Now, the last little part is easy. It's equal the total count days we had minus the weekends minus the d days off. And that was our ultimate goal here, control enter. And sure enough, we have it. And so we had to do a little uh, t tricky footwork with our uh, counting days, our huge uh, formula for counting weekends, our formula for counting uh, due, and finally, our uh, total tally days off. All right, we'll see you next trick.